Lucid CEO Peter Rawlinson, thank you for speaking to Bloomberg Television. You've spoken in the past about being cautious and with some skepticism about the world of SPACs and, and EV companies going public via that route. So why have you gone public with the SPAC? Well, I, I see the SPAC route as a tool. I think the great news and the big message here is that a great EV company has gone, is going public. And that process is enabling us to accelerate our growth. We've got a fantastic injection of cash. We've got long-term security. We've been able to attract uh, the bluest of blue chip companies to make long-term investments in us. And I just see the SPAC as just a useful tool now to achieve that. You've delayed production until the second half of 2021. You said it would, deliveries of Lucid Air would start in the spring. What's behind that delay? Well, I, I, I mean, I was pushing like crazy for spring. And when we uh, met with the Churchill Capital team and I took Alan Mulley out in the car and Alan drove the car, loved it, the very first car off the production line. We had a meeting of minds with Alan and all his experience from Boeing, with Michael Klein, and myself, we all got on like a house on fire. And we recognized that, you know, well, Peter, why are you pushing like crazy for this sort of almost artificial state in spring? What's really important here is to get the quality right. You will know when that is perfect, when it will truly delight a customer. And so they freed me. They said, look, get the product right. Don't work to the artificial construct of a specific date. If it rolls on into the second half of the year, we are okay with that. We'll put the capital, you can pull the trigger when the time is right. We entrust you to get it right. We know you wanna make it perfect. This is a lot deal. We're making a luxury car. And you know, when Tesla came to market with Model S 10 years ago, I think a lot of slack was cut then because, you know, the, the electric car was such a fun experience. People forgave the build quality issues. The market is not going to be forgiven now. This is a very different world. We have to get things right. And in, the, the impact of COVID is not to be underestimated here, Ed. So, you know, um, we're chasing down a, 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 a number of suppliers from around the world. We have 250 suppliers, 3,000 parts, and that whole uh, infrastructure, logistic operation has been affected by COVID. So that's had a big impact of just pushing it out a little bit into the second half. Has the global semiconductor shortage had any impact in, and caused this delay in production? It hasn't for us because we've had some very savvy purchasers in our purchasing uh, teams who actually preempted this and have negotiated supply agreements, which have really mitigated that risk. But I recognize it's affecting some of the automakers, uh, notably Porsche or their announcement very recently. What about a cash crunch? I mean, how pressing was the need for you to raise funds prior to this deal? You say in the investor deck that you're going to need around $600 million in terms of bridge financing before the deal with Churchill closes later this year. There was no cash crunch. We've got a great primary investor in the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia. They're in for the long term. Uh, they, they, they are, they've got pockets and they're very supportive of us as strategic investors. For them, this was a validation point and validate we have indeed. We have attracted the bluest of blue chip investors to validate their original investment. We didn't go to the market needy at all. We went for validation and that is exactly what we have achieved. So the bridge financing will come from the Saudi Public Investment Fund? Indeed. You say in the investor deck that you're going to spend about $10 billion over the course of the next four years. That's a lot of money in a short space of time. How are you going to get those additional funds? Well, we've already um, brought in $4.5 billion 
um, from the, 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 the Churchill Capital, from the SPAC and the pipe, the pipe. We extended the pipe because it was so oversubscribed. We could have gone for more actually, and we decided to limit it. Um, that gives us an absolute clear runway well into 2023. And in that time, we can build out phase two of the factory, that's capital intensive, but we're investing because we're vertically integrated. And it gets us to a situation where gravity will be very nearly ready for production. So broadly, you'll return, have... you'll return to the capital markets at some point to raise the funds that you need. Absolutely. We'll do so when, when we think that the trading conditions are appropriate. But make no mistake, this puts us in a very strong position financially, in a cash position, which is great. It means that we can accelerate our plans. And this does, this uh, um, loss of, 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 of uh, the world's best investors are in it for the long term with us. So I'm very confident now we're in a position of strength like we've never been. And as I say, the SPAC has been the enabling tool for this position of strength. You and I have discussed Lucid's technology a lot over the years. And one idea that we've touched on is, is selling the, the skateboard or, or the battery technology to other automakers for use in their EVs. Do you think that that's something that could happen sooner rather than later? Absolutely. It's a passion of mine. You know, I want to change them. Uh, I want to sell millions of cars. Uh, the, the trouble is, though, that to get to sort of the mass market with the proverbial $25,000 car, it's kind of a horrible business to be in because it's a numbers game. It's numbers and low margin, huge capex. And quite frankly, Lucid's about eight or nine years away in terms of its infrastructure and maturity to even contemplate such a project. And our shareholders may not wish to do that anyway. But a way of leapfrogging this is potentially um, providing our, our, our technology to other automakers. Maybe it's for them to make that. And what is... Uh, is, is little uh, and realized about our tech is because we're doing a supercar like Lucid Air behind me, we've got all this race technology embodied in it. You'd think it would be very active, rather esoteric to manufacture. Not at all. My passion is to really mass industrialize EV technology and electric powertrain systems in a way that no one else has done before. And because by design for mass production will drive the cost down. And that will make our technology that we develop today for a high-end product eminently suitable for true mass production and lead the path for the $25,000 EV. Churchill Capital stock is down more than 40% at the open. How much do you pay attention to that? A lot of retail traders bought into the stock prior to the announcement of the deal, prior to the investor deck, which had all the details. What's your reaction to today's share move? Well, first of all, I think that uh, the real value position of Lucid is its technology and it's the long term. I'm a term thinker and I passionately believe that the company will be huge based upon its technology in the long term. So I, I'm not too alarmed by um, short term is uh, the volatility. But I think there's been a profound misunderstanding and miscomprehension uh, comprehension here, Ed. Uh, before uh, the, the deal was announced, there was a lot of rumors in the market, and the rumors were indicating that the, the deal, the pre-money deal, would be somewhere in the region between 12 billion and 15 billion. Uh, for investors in CCIV, 12 billion would be good because a CCIV would have had a bargain with its investment in Lucid and 15 would have not been so good because that would have been viewed by the market as a higher price. Actually, the pre-money acquisition price was lower than 12 billion. It was 11.75. That's outstanding news. But what has also happened is a series of unprecedented events we were able to attract the very best of the best investors. And we were significantly oversubscribed. That led to a larger uh, pipe than we'd originally inflated. 
But moreover, not only did we attract the very best, the bluest of the blue chip is from the right around the world, in an unprecedented manner, it committed at $15. And I believe this has not happened before. So of course, that drove up just that $15 combined with a bigger pipe, the $15 added 50% to the post money valuation. So let, let's not confuse the 24 million post money. That is uh, a mark, a measure of our value, our value by very savvy experienced investors. The actual value that the, the, um, uh, the, the, the street should be looking at is the 11.75 billion acquisition value, the pre-money. How much money did Michael Klein make on this deal, on paper at least? I think you'd have to ask Michael. How much money did you make on this deal? Uh, my uh, my holdings of uh, are more than you would and perhaps expect. And Peter, let's settle one thing once and for all: Is Lucid a Tesla competitor? Um, I think that our products are Mercedes-Benz competitors but I think it's fair to compare our technology where our technology competes with Tesla. The car competes with Mercedes, the tech unashamedly competes with Tesla. Okay, Lucid CEO, Peter Rawlinson, thank you very much for speaking to Bloomberg Television.